This my last wish. When if y'all get my car, burn the motherfucking ties. Please burn my motherfucking ties if I pass away. Right, I'm about to make it even sweeter, man. Now, like I told you, being my assistant cruise director, right, you gotta keep the energy up, 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 up. You gotta make sure everyone's smiling, everyone's having a good time. I mean, it's a hard job. You're never gonna sleep. So to make sure that you never go to sleep all cruise long, I am giving you this whole bag of candy from the Cherry on Top candy shop. Bam! That's what I'm talking about, buddy. Now, now Diesel, that bag expires in like five minutes, so you know. So just tear it down. Dad, he ain't going to sleep all cruise long. Are you excited, man? Yes. What, um, uh, what, what are you going to do tomorrow in Nassau, Bahamas? Just kind of go with the flow? That's the best way to go. But whatever you do, you better let everybody know that Diesel is in the HOUSC with his buddy T-O-double-D, your assistant cruise director. Let's give it up for my boy Diesel. Come on down, buddy. I cannot wait. I will see you at Builder Bear. What a cool dude. Now, actually, Rico, Rico, come up here for a second. I want to show you off. Now, Rico over here, this is my buddy Rico. Now, Rico is going to make it rain, rain, rain all cruise long. He is your bingo host with the most. Who likes winning money? Well, we got a whole lot of money to give out this cruise, and Rico and I cannot wait to give you this money. Do you want to know why? It's not ours. We got a whole lot of money from tomorrow, our $1,000 mystery bingo. And then on our last sea day, we got our $5,000 holiday bingo. Bam. And then who's ever wanted to be on the show, deal or no deal? We are bringing it tomorrow night right to this very stage. We're going to pick two contestants, come up on stage. You stand a chance on the game show to win a ton of money. And for everyone who doesn't get to be a contestant in the audience, you play from your seats and the prizes only get bigger and better. There's a lot of money to give away. Now, like I said, Rico over here is part of your fun squad. He's your bingo host. However, Rico is not the only member of the squad. Would you like to meet the rest of the fun squad? Fun Squad, come on up to the stage. I'm gonna get those hands clapping and we're gonna welcome them on up. Come on, come on, come on. Here they come, here they come. A, A, J, A, A, J. Now, we are dancing for you. I want you to give a hand all the way from Georgia. Give it up for AJ. And of course, you met. Rico, go Rico, you didn't show them how you break it off. You show them how you break it, break it, break it down. Break it, break it, break it down. Bam! Don't hurt nobody. Carnival Freedom, we are the fun squad, the most fun squad on the seven seas. Here to ensure that you are having the most fun vacation experience. And actually, Rico, AJ, I just kind of got this, you know, crazy idea, right? Now, it's a bit wild out, but we're going to make it wilder in here. So, AJ, what I want you to do is I want you to go into this side of the audience, and I need you to find me two of the most wild, outgoing party people that want to have a little bit of fun tonight. And, and Rico, right up here, I want you to do the same thing on this side. I'm looking for the most fun people in the house. Esther from Florida. 
Florida. And my friend, what's your name? Where are you from? Raymond, also from Florida. Raymond, also from Florida. May the force be with you both. Now, next up, my friends over here, what's your name? Where are you from? Demetrius from Arkansas. Hey, Demetrius from Arkansas. And what about you, my friend? Richard from Arkansas. Richard from Arkansas. I love it. So we got Team Florida, Team Arkansas. Now, my friends, I'm going to put you to the test. I said I'm going to be looking for the most wild, outgoing party people that there is. So I want you to hold on to that. But what I want you to do is I want to see just how well you can hype up this room. So when I say go, I need you to get this room cheering, jumping, bumping, whatever you got to do. Now, whichever side cheers the loudest, I'm going to give you a prize. Now, you're going to thank me for this if you win it, okay? Do you think you're up for the challenge? I know you are. You think you're up for the challenge? All right, we're going to see if it's Team Nebraska versus Team Florida. Team Arkansas, excuse me, versus Team Florida. Are you ready, my teams? On your mark, get set, go! Let's hype up this room! Sweating just watching you all. You all hot, right? You're hot now. You're ooh, probably so sweet. Well, like I, I got a little confession for you. I, I was never actually really gonna pick a winning side. I just wanted to see how well we could hype up this room, you know, so I know what we're working with. But you know what? Because I love your commitment, I loved your style, I loved your artistic flair. We're gonna be making all four of you our VIPs. What does it mean to be one of our VIPs? I'ma tell ya. Now, do you see these eight amazingly beautiful people sitting right here in the first row? This is your playlist cast. Now, they are the ones that are gonna be singing and dancing for you all cruise long. Now, on Princess K Night, we're gonna have our first production show, 80s Pop to the Max. You're gonna come to this lounge, this theater, and you're gonna wear those passes. However, our VIPs are not just going to sit in any seat. No, 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 no. You will be sitting in your VIP thrones right over here. <laughs> now, I know you must be thirsty from all that jumping, shaking, money, making. Well, i got to keep my VIPs well hydrated, of course, right? So we're going to give you a little bit of sparkly bubbly right there for you. I keep you hydrated. I know. Keep you nice and hydrated. I told you you are going to thank me. But wait. It gets better. It gets better, if you could believe it. You like winning money, right? You like bingo, right? Well, Rico was so kind enough to cook you a hot, fresh bingo Rito for tomorrow's thousand dollar mystery bingo. Are you excited now? Let's give it up for our VIPs. You can take that bubbly back to your seat any which way you like it. Just give it a shake and shake and shake it up. Now, my friend, like I said, we have, he has been seen on HBO and Comedy Central Live. Carnival Freedom, just like you did in that cheering contest. I need you to put your hands together. Make some noise for John Floyd! Thank y'all so much. What a crowd, what a crowd. How y'all doing? All 12 of you. All right. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Did y'all see my picture outside? Anywhere on the ship today on the big joke? Are you leaving already? Seriously? Am I not that funny? I mean, I haven't even told a joke yet. 
Oh, well, whatever. Uh, my picture's all over the ship. I'm better looking in person. Did People tell me I look like George Clooney in that picture. What do you think? No, wait, not George Clooney. George Costanza from Seinfeld. That's who it is. I get told I look like a lot of celebrities. None of them are good looking. I get George Costanza a lot. Who else? A, a chubby Justin Bieber. Tim Conway. Peter, the little fat boy on the Cosby show that played with Rudy and never said a word in eight seasons. Yeah. Some of you don't remember who I'm talking about, but you'll get home next week. You'll be flipping through the channels. You'll get a TV land and go, oh my God, there he is. It's a comedian we saw on the ship last week. If George Costanza was here tonight, you know what he'd be saying? The sea was angry that day, my friends. Okay, apparently y'all never watched some, so all right. <laughs> People tell me I look like a preacher all the time, too. Do y'all think I look like a preacher? Do you really? I get that a lot. I don't know why. I go to church, but I'm sitting in the pew being quiet. I'm not up there at the pulpit doing a sermon or anything. People assume that because I'm Southern and kind of conservative, I'm a Baptist. I'm not. I'm a Methodist. The only difference between a Baptist and a Methodist is Methodists will wait to each other at the liquor store. <laughs> I had a guy come up to me after a show not too long ago. He told me that I looked like what might would happen if Spanky from the Little Rascals swallowed Michael J. Fox. <laughs> okay, you'll chuckle to that one. All right. Uh, I flew here today. Anybody else fly down to Florida today? Or uh, maybe if you're from South Florida, yeah. I hate flying. I fly about every week. It's terrible. I get to board zone one because I fly a lot, but it doesn't matter. You know why? They let everybody board zone one. Even people not on that plane, they let them bombard the doorway just to be obnoxious. It drives me crazy. It's because they don't enforce it. I love to own that microphone. I would enforce it and embarrass the heck out of people, especially when they were boarding first class. I'd be like, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this time we'll be boarding our first class passengers. First class only. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, you in the butt like tank top and the sweatpants. Yeah, I think you're good to sit down for a few more minutes. Thank you. <laughs> so they don't enforce it. You know what I think they need to enforce it? Cattle prods. Just zap people. And then make an example of them and everybody else in the room. They're like, okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you direct your attention up here to the gate area, you see a man lying on the floor unconscious. His phone number had not been called. Don't be next. Oh, now they talking about the early boarding when they say this time we'll be boarding people traveling with small children. What's the key word? Small children. Does that mean you and your teenagers can hop on the plane at your leisure? Again, I'd love to be the one to enforce that. Say, oh, you think your 17 year old son is a small kid? Pick him up. Pick him right now. We'll carry him down the jetway. Let's go. Come on. Now, I don't want to see his boarding pass. He's going to sit in your lap for the entire flight. You know that, don't you? I hate all the announcements they make on planes. They tell you stuff you don't need to know. Like, and if there's a water landing, your seat cushion will act as a flotation device. Just put your arms through the straps and hug it tightly to your chest. Now, in the event of a water landing, then it's going to be floating or a bunch of dead bodies, all right? I mean, I don't mean that mean, but think about it. Have you ever one time turned on the news and seen a plane that just fell from 35,000 feet out of the sky into the ocean, but 20 yards away from the debris was a dude floating on his seat going, woo! Look, my arms fit right through the straps. Glad I was listening to the instructions. Oh, Y'all, I'm killing it up here. I'm running in front of 20 people in a room that holds 700 people. All right. Oh, it's almost Christmas. Have you got your shopping done? Yeah. Laser clapping. No man better clap. It's on what is today, December 14th. Not in the history of, since baby Jesus was born has any man had his Christmas shopping done on December 14th. You know, Christmas Eve, you'll be saying to your wife, Honey, did we get something from my mom this year? I don't remember. Uh, Y'all watch those Hallmark Christmas movies? Yeah. <laughs> did y'all ever see that Hallmark Christmas movie? I can't remember the name of it. But it was about that girl. She had a really big corporate job in the big city. And she, she was engaged to a really snobby guy that only cared about his work and money. And then she had to go home to help her family business get run in Vermont. And then while she was there, she fell in love with the little the handyman that drove the old pickup truck and had the five-day beard for the entire movie. And then at the end, she decided to dump her boyfriend from the big city and move back and stay in Vermont and open a bakery. Did y'all ever see that one? Yeah, that was a good one, wasn't it? They could have that girl for there was a child star on that TV show in the 90s. I can't remember what it was. But Oh, speaking of Christmas shows, I don't usually do this. I don't, and if I do, it's obviously in the month of December. It's the only impression I do. Charlie in the Box from Rudolph. Y'all remember that? At the end, when they're on the Isle of Misfit Toys, and they're all upset because they think no kids going to want them on Christmas Eve. Then they hear Santa's sleigh coming in the distance, and Charlie in the Box goes, That sounds like Santa. It is, it is. 
and Rudolph is going to get slain. Oh, hey, I didn't even see y'all over there. All right, I promise I'm usually funnier than this, okay? I got The show's only a little bit over. We got another comedian coming up, and I have a show at 1030 in the back lounge on deck five. Go to, walk, get on deck five, walk all the way to the back. If you fall in the ocean, you've gone too far. So swim backwards, and you know, that's where my show is. It's an adult show, so you, you kids can go to the casino while your parents come to my adult show. I promise it'll be funnier than this has been so far, or at least I hope that y'all think it will be. Oh, Lord. I'm from North Carolina. Anybody else? Woo! Are you really? Uh, I, got, I, I got a good friend that lives in Jackson, Mississippi. He thinks me, oh, there you go. He thinks me being from North Carolina makes me a Yankee, which ticks me off. I mean, do I sound like a Yankee? I mean, sure, you know. I was in Mississippi a while back staying with him. He and his wife are getting ready to take me out to dinner. They're trying to decide where to take me. He said, let's go get some fried chicken. I bet John's never had fried chicken before. I said, I've had fried chicken before. He kind of rolled his eyes a little bit and said, you've never had southern fried chicken before. I like, oh my gosh, please take me to get some southern fried chicken. Because apparently I've been eating northern chicken my whole life and didn't even know it. I should have known it was a northern chicken. It's because before they killed it, it was walking around the barnyard going, cluckety, cluckety, cluck. Cluckety, cluckety, cluck. I'm a northern chicken. Cluckety, cluck. Well, you're going to eat me? Get the cluck out of here. You're not going to eat me. I took one bite of that. And I have for my friend John, who is just up here, another Amber John. Woo! And I have for anybody else who came out here tonight. Woo! And I have for yourselves for breaking this. Woo! Moving. Can you feel it moving? <laughs> Speak English? Good to do Well, see, I'll, I'll tell you, this, it, it is moving though. Can you feel it? I mean, this is my this is my this is my 880th cruise. That's true, and so I have sea legs. I don't feel anything from here down. Anyway, so uh, well, welcome to my show. My name is Bud Anderson, and it is. I wasn't. We weren't supposed to do this tonight. It was supposed to be some dancers, but they didn't want them to get hurt. But apparently, we can. <laughs> so they called, they called me up and they said, "Hey, you want to do a seven minute show here?" And I said, "They said I said I don't know." And they said, "Do you have a, a, a like accidental injury insurance?" I said, "Yes, I do." And they said, "Okay, you're doing it." So here I am. But now, if I fall down as part of the show, hi little child. Okay, if I fall down as part of the show, because when when men make mistakes like that, we don't make mistakes. Men don't make we plan it, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the most common things you see on ships is tripping on nothing. Has anybody tripped on nothing yet? Yes. It happens all the time. When I used to work in comedy clubs, I would see drunks do this all the time. Or I would trip on nothing, and then because there was drunks there, I'd make sure every time I walked by that spot, I'd step over it because there's nothing there. But the drunks would see this, and they start doing it too. <laughs> but what I've noticed by observing, because I observe everything, uh, men, women handle this better than men. I think they really do. I've seen women trip, and they just handle it so cool. They let it go. It's like they trip, and they go. Out of sight, out of mind, they let it go. Men can't do this. When we make mistakes, we pretend like we planned it. I call it ignorance, ignorance and arrogance. My favorite is a pseudo jock, the man that thinks he's a jock. He'll be walking cash, trip go. Yeah. And I know because I've done it like a hundred times, okay? Okay. So I'll tell you some stuff about me. I, first of all, I have five shows coming up this week. They're all different, I think. And, uh, and I, my, my name is Bud Anderson. It's my real name. My birth name is actually Buddy Anderson. Bud is short for Buddy. And then shorter than Bud would just be Bud. Or, or just simply Bud. <laughs> Which is what my doll calls me. <laughs> and I, I went to college at University of Nebraska. I have six degrees, which is why I'm doing this for a living. <laughs> I have five bachelor degrees, and my master's is nutrition. And I'm not a dietitian. You want to lose weight, eat less calories. You want to gain weight, eat more. There, two sentences. Pretty easy. I mostly work with cancer patients who can't absorb mineral, vitamins and minerals because of chemo and stuff. So anyway, but I'm a nutritionist. But when I tell the other comics I work with that I'm a nutritionist, <clears throat> when we go to eat lunch or dinner, they watch everything I eat. It drives me crazy. They're going, you going to eat that? You going to eat that? <laughs> yeah, I eat everything. I just don't eat a lot of everything. So I, this happened, one of the worst times this happened was I, I've done 163 TV commercials. And one of them I did about before COVID, which we'll call it BC. Uh, I was out in Cal California. So, no, I don't want your number, no. I don't want to give you my end, no. I don't want to need you nowhere. 